I think most people that are buying the Canon EOS R7 right now should be buying the Canon EOS RP instead. And I think if you are a dedicated sports and wildlife shooter, then I think the R7 is definitely the camera for you. You are dismissed. The RP really can't compete with that camera in that sort of photo and video. If you are a general purpose photographer, if you are taking photos of your family, if you are a portrait photographer, if you are a landscape photographer, then there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that the Canon EOS RP with its full frame sensor is a significantly better camera. It also can be had used for about half the price of the Canon EOS R7. There's tons of them on eBay. I will put a link in the description down below. Tons of them you can find on there. And as I said, seven to $800, around half the price of an R7. And the biggest difference between the RP and the R7 is the full frame sensor. And what you have to understand is this full frame sensor, although when it was put in the RP, it sort of had been around a little while. It came out of, I think it was the 6D Mark II. This is still a sensor that was used to take professional photographs that put uh, photos on the covers of magazines that were used in advertising. This is still an incredibly high quality sensor and it takes beautiful full frame images. And it has a number of advantages that full frame sensors generally have over crop sensors. And to start with, you are going to be able to achieve a shallower depth of field using the exact same lens on the RP compared to the R7. So if you want those blurry background portraits or if you want that subject isolation, it doesn't matter what lens you're using, you are going to get more of that, significantly more of that using the RP. And the reason for that is just a bit of physics. And essentially the closer that you can get to your subject, the more blurry your background becomes. And because the EOS RP is a full frame sensor, it is using more of these lenses, more of the RF lenses, and you can get closer to your subject because you fit more in the frame on a full frame sensor. So that by default is going to give you a significantly more blurry background. Now this is important because on the Canon RF mount, there's the 35 f1.8, which is around a $500 lens or so. There is the 50 millimeter f1.8, I think that's, under $200, around $200, something like that. Those are both great lenses, but they perform significantly better on the EOS RP as far as getting that shallow depth of field. So putting those inexpensive lenses on the R7 versus the RP, the RP images are going to look better. The other thing is even though the RP has an older sensor than the new R7 sensor, the EOS RP has greater dynamic range. And that means when it captures an image, there can be a greater difference between the brightest parts of the image and the darkest parts of the image before the dark parts go totally black and the light parts go totally white. And this is kind of an important part of taking high quality photos and high quality videos because nothing really looks that great if the sky is just turned completely white behind you or the shadow is sort of com completely dark and you're losing that information. And even though the R7 has got a sensor that is like the latest technology, because of the size of these sensors and the size of the pixels inside each of the sensors, the dynamic range on the RP is significantly better. The other thing is the RP is significantly better in low light. And this is a bit of a surprise to people because once again, it's older sensor, but it just happens to be the mechanics of the larger pixels on the larger sensor versus the smaller pixels on the smaller sensor. This doesn't always work this way when it plays between brands, but definitely between the RP and the R7, you are going to get significantly better low light performance in the RP. This is really gonna open up your options as far as being able to crank up your ISO, get your shutter speed fast enough to grab some photos that you couldn't otherwise, get video that isn't sort of all grainy and gritty and blurry looking. So if you are somebody who shoots in low light a lot, the R7 is absolutely not a great camera for that. The RP is a fantastic camera for that. The other problem I see with the R7 is it's a crop sensor camera. And one of the advantages of crop sensor cameras is that the lenses don't cost as much as a full frame lens. 
So you buy a crop sensor camera, often it's cheaper than the full frame camera because of the technology and sensor that's inside, but then you also continue to get that advantage by being able to buy less expensive crop sensor lenses. That is a, is a combination that just makes the whole ownership experience less expensive on a, a crop sensor camera like the R7. But right now the R7 only has two effectively kit lenses available for it, and they're not great lenses. So you're probably, if you buy that camera and you're sort of trying to be budget conscious, you're probably going to be looking at adapting old full frame lenses, or you're going to be looking at adapting some of the new RF lenses like the 3518 or the 5018. But the 3518 and the 5018 are going to perform significantly better on a full frame camera than they are a crop sensor camera, including the fact that you're going to get a more blurry background, including the fact you're going to get better low light performance, including the fact you're gonna get better dynamic range. These lenses were designed to work on a full frame sensor. You put them on the crop sensor, you can use them, but they, they don't perform anywhere near at the level that they do on a full frame sensor. Now, when it comes to video, the Canon R7 has great detailed 4K, down-sampled 4K video. The RP, if you want to access the dual pixel autofocus, which most people do, you are only going to be shooting in 1080p. This is a fairly significant difference. And this means that technically, as far as the information that comes across to your computer uh, in the files from both of these cameras, the R7 is significantly better. And in a lot of situations, I probably would pick the R7. But what we have to keep in mind is we are comparing a very detailed 4K crop sensor image to a 1080p full frame image, which is going to have the creamy background blur and it's going to have the better low light performance. So it isn't just a, this is better than that. I think a lot of it depends on what you want. And if you are trying to get a very cinematic looking image, you're definitely going to get a more cinematic image out of the RP than you are the R7. And what you find is with these new Hollywood cameras, they are using sort of full frame sensors. So what's coming out of Hollywood is going to look a lot more like what's coming out of the EOS RP these days. When they do shoot with one of those cameras that has that super detailed high resolution 4K, they're often either using vintage lenses on it to kind of knock down that detail so it doesn't look too sharp, or they're putting diffusion filters on it to kind of sort of knock down and soften that image. So the modern 4K image, like you're gonna get out of the R7 when you're trying to create a sort of a cinematic look, is probably going to be too sharp straight out of camera. Where the 1080p footage, is obviously softer because there's only 25% the pixels that there are in 4K, but it does have a tendency to look a bit more smooth, a little bit more cinematic. It's not highlighting every wrinkle or every fold in someone's face. So I think you are, I think you could make the choice to shoot 1080p full frame over crop sensor 4K, depending on what your application is. Now, the other thing that the RP is gonna be great for is adapting affordable full frame lenses. And I've got a couple lenses here. I've got the 35 F1.8 RF mount on there now, which is a beautiful lens. But the other lenses I've got here, I have got what they call the Shorty 40. This is a 40 millimeter F2.8. This is a fantastic lens, but when you shoot it on a crop sensor camera, F2.8, really doesn't do much for you. It doesn't look like much. You don't get much of a blurry background. You're actually shooting at something like equivalent, uh, equivalent to a 60 millimeter lens. This isn't a great lens on a crop sensor camera, but you put this on a full frame camera and it just comes alive. And F2.8 is enough to get a reasonably bur blurry background. The other one is the Nifty 50 that a lot of people already own. You put this on a crop sensor camera. I mean, it's okay. It's not bad. But once again, you put this on a full frame camera and it just comes alive and it just looks so much better. You just get a more blurry background. This lens was designed to be used on a full frame sensor and it looks best on a full frame sensor. And you don't necessarily have to buy Canon's branded adapter for the EOS R RF system. You can actually just buy a generic one. I'll link one in the description down below. There's a company that makes one and uh, I mean, it's like 50 bucks or something like that. And it works exactly the same because all it's doing is just 
passing through the connections. It's not actually making any decisions. There's no smart things, electronics in that actual adapter. It's just passing the information from the camera body to the lens to adapt the different mounting point. That's all it's doing. So any of these generic adapters will do, but I will link one in the description up below that I found to be very good. So as I was editing this video, I thought, wow, it really sounds like I am bashing this R7, which was not the intent of this video at all. It was really kind of to be a devil's advocate and point out the ways that the EOS RP might be superior for even most people to the Canon EOS R7 and why I bought the RP. But my next camera probably will be the R7. And essentially, when we look at the advantages that the R7 has over the RP, basically we're talking about every bit of technology that is in that camera, aside from the sensor, is superior to the EOS RP. You are getting a much better autofocus system that will track almost anything, any object, any type of thing in any situation. There's some sort of artificial intelligence that Canon has put into this camera that is just unbelievable to allow it to pick up and stay with subjects. It's on par with the with the R3, which is like a you know $6,000, $7,000 camera, something like that. In addition to that, the quality of the video, the downsampled 6K to 4K video is absolutely incredible. You've also got the super high frame rate shooting mode for photography. So pretty much in every way, aside from the advantages of that full frame sensor of the RP, the R7 is a superior camera. And I will probably buy the R7 maybe mainly as a video camera for me. And there is a group of people that I think absolutely should probably buy the R7 over the RP, and that's people who are already shooting crop sensor, already have some Canon EFS lenses from like a 70D, 80D, 90D lenses that they're really happy with. All they have to do is buy the body on the R7, buy an adapter, and they move all their lenses over, and now you're getting all that, you know, so you're getting a 32 megapixel sensor, you're getting that incredible autofocus system, you're getting the incredible video quality and 4K downsampled. So this is an unbelievable camera for those people. And I am also in that situation as well. And I will probably buy the R7 specifically to pair up with my Sigma 18 to 35 adapted. And I think that will be an incredible video setup. I just didn't want you to think that I thought the R7 was terrible. There certainly are plenty of people that should buy the R7 over the EOS RP. Now, if you're interested in taking better photos without spending any money, the best thing you can do is upgrade your skills. And I've just thrown a video on screen now. And this is the best tutorial I think I've ever done on photography. And if you watch that thing beginning to end, I promise you will be a better photographer at the end of that video than you are right now.